So in this video, we're gonna take a, an in-depth look at the new automatic timeline scrolling feature in Final Cut Pro 10.7. It sounds simple on the surface, but it's actually a lot deeper than it initially appears. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So here is what the timeline looks like in Final Cut Pro 10.6.10. .10. And I wanna show you what the playback looks like without the automatic scrolling timeline. Uh, so we're gonna zoom in a little bit here and we'll get our playhead in position right about here. Now watch what happens when it goes off screen. It continues to play, but the playhead is off screen. Now you can scroll manually, but notice you don't have any clip preview thumbnails and you don't have any waveform data for your audio, yet the playhead continues to move. And you can confirm in the viewer that your footage is playing back. This is how Final Cut Pro has worked for years. Now, just for emphasis, I'm gonna make the clips a little bit bigger here on the timeline, just so you can see very clearly. And we're going to go ahead and play back again from the edge of the screen like this. And when the playhead goes off screen, you're gonna see that none of the waveforms or clip thumbnail previews are updated until we stop playback like that. So in Final Cut Pro 10.7, Apple has finally provided users with an automatic timeline scrolling feature. This is something that users have wanted for years. So let's look at how to enable it and see how it works. So here is Final Cut Pro 10.7 now, and you're gonna notice as I play back this clip, the timeline's still behaving like it it always has behaved, right? But that's because I haven't enabled the automatic scrolling timeline. So this is the old behavior. Now let's go ahead and enable the scrolling timeline, go up to Final Cut Pro settings, go to your playback page, and then you're gonna see scroll timeline continuously during playback. You just wanna enable that just like that. So now that that automatic scrolling timeline is enabled, look what happens. The timeline is scrolling as you're playing back just like that. Now this is something very handy. You can toggle the scrolling timeline feature using a keyboard shortcut. Let me show you how to do it right now. So if you go up to Final Cut Pro Command Sets, Customize, you can go ahead and add in here a keyboard shortcut. So I'll just use Option Command Shift T to enable or disable the timeline scrolling. So by adding this keyboard shortcut, I can stop or resume automatic timeline scrolling on the fly at any time just by using my keyboard shortcut. So that's a pretty cool feature to have in your back pocket for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and just play back this project and observe how the automatic scrolling timeline performs. So it performs pretty well. You can actually zoom in or zoom out on the fly and playback will continue and all the clip data will be updated in real time, everything redrawn in, in real time. So this may seem simple, but this is a fairly complex operation when you have all these frames being generated and they're accurate as far as time is concerned. It's pretty impressive. Now I'm not knocking any other NLE. Let me just make that clear because Adobe and DaVinci have some amazing features that I could only wish the Final Cut Pro would have. But when it comes to timeline playback performance, I think you'll see why I say Final Cut Pro 10.7 is so impressive when I compare the playback performance versus DaVinci Resolve or versus Adobe Premiere Pro. So stay tuned to that a little bit later in the video. But now let's talk about why playhead position is such an important thing to consider with this new automatic scrolling timeline. Let's have a look. So with automatic timeline scrolling, you're gonna notice that the playhead is gonna to want to stay in the middle of your timeline. So if you start playback with the playhead to the right of the middle, you'll notice that over time, the playhead will migrate back to the middle of the timeline. Now, if you have the playhead located on the left side and you play back, you're gonna notice that until the playhead reaches the middle, that automatic timeline scrolling doesn't yet begin. So watch this. As soon as the playhead hits the middle of the timeline, then the scrolling starts. So again, Scrolling starts when it hits the middle of the timeline. One more time for emphasis. So it hits the middle and the automatic scrolling begins. But what if you, as playback is playing, click on the right side of the timeline? Well, 
Automatic playback will continue, but the playhead will migrate back to the middle, just like that. Now, what about when there's no more clip data left to scroll? Well, once it reaches that point, as you see right here in this example, then automatic scrolling will stop and the playhead will continue until it reaches the end of the timeline. Now, when you try to scroll past the playhead, either left or right, while automatic timeline scrolling is enabled, this is what happens. Now, what about when you're playing back a clip with automatic timeline scrolling enabled and you use a trackpad gesture to move forward or backwards on the timeline? Well, you can only go as far as the actual playhead. If you try to go past the playhead, either to the left or to the right, you'll get a rubber banding sort of animation and it'll basically keep you confined to the point where the playhead is always visible. So you can't actually scroll past the playhead or else the rubber banding animation will basically push you back into place so that the playhead is always visible. So this is where that keyboard shortcut that I showed you how to set up comes in handy because you can disable automatic timeline scrolling and then that will allow you to scroll anywhere on the timeline, regardless of where the playhead is, if you wanna do that. Now, granted, you won't get the clip data or the waveform data for your audio, but that's okay, right? If you just wanna scroll forward or backwards, you don't wanna worry about where the playhead is, use your keyboard shortcut and disable automatic timeline scrolling, and then re-enable it when you're finished. Now, of course, you can zoom in or out while automatic timeline scrolling is enabled. Here's what it looks like. Now, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, you can also use your zoom controls, your keyboard shortcuts to zoom in or zoom out of the timeline while your project is playing back and with automatic timeline scrolling enabled. So when you do so, the clip thumbnail previews and the waveform data for the audio is automatically redrawn in real time. But you'll also notice that if you zoom in too far, then it gets a little bit crazy because the, the clip data basically works like a, a flip book almost and it's just kind of hard it's a little bit disorienting and sometimes the scrolling will be so fast that the clip thumbnail previews can't catch up to solve that you just simply stop or zoom out and that will give it time to allow the clip previews to catch up now apple designed the automatic scrolling timeline to be a little bit smarter than it may appear at first glance here's what i mean now this is something that, that I found really cool. When automatic timeline scrolling is enabled and you're playing back a project, notice what happens when you put your cursor over one of the clips as if you're gonna make an, a minor edit. It pauses the timeline scrolling so that you can make whatever edit you're going to make uh, and not be disoriented by the scrolling. So you see, you just put your mouse over it like that. And now I can, for instance, adjust the volume of the clip if I wanna do that or do other edits. So you can see I'm adjusting and the timeline scrolling has stopped while I'm making these adjustments. So let me show you that one more time. So timeline is scrolling. And now I put my mouse over this audio clip and I can make any adjustments I need to make. And you can see it pauses the scrolling so that I'm not disoriented while making those adjustments. And then as soon as I'm finished, the scrolling re-enables automatically. Now, I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed that this feature did not make the cut for Final Cut Pro 10.7. Now, this is one of the things I was most disappointed to see uh, wasn't included in Final Cut Pro 10.7. So when recording that voiceover, you can see no waveform data, no real-time waveform data appears during that voiceover recording. It only appears whenever you stop the recording just like Final Cut Pro has always been. Hopefully we'll see real-time waveform data for voiceovers in a future update. So how does Apple's implementation of automatic timeline scrolling compare to the likes of DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro? Well, here's what I found. So here's what the scrolling timeline looks like in DaVinci Resolve. You'll see the clip preview thumbnails and you see the audio waveforms, but it's not exactly real time because when I stop playback, you'll see everything sort of catch up. Now you may be thinking, well, that's because you're supposed to use the cut page. And while the cut page does provide a little bit more of a real-time sense or real-time flow, it too suffers from some of the same problems that we saw on the edit page. Now let's look at Adobe Premiere Pro. So we have to go in and make some adjustments to our timeline to show the thumbnail previews. So we can just go in here, expand all, so we can see the audio waveforms, but you still only see that little small thumbnail preview at the beginning of that clip. So what we can do is we can go in 
and video head and tail thumbnail. So you can do one at the beginning, one at the end, but if you want a full thumbnail preview throughout the entire clip, you can just see or select continuous video thumbnails. But notice how long it takes, first of all, to even populate those thumbnails just like that. Um, and then of course, when you're playing back or you're zooming in or making any change to the timeline, it is slow uh, to regenerate as you can see there. And then playing back is definitely not real time at all, but you can just kind of see that from zooming in and zooming out. But when I play back, it's definitely a, a less than ideal experience. So really what Apple has brought to the table is fairly impressive in my opinion. A lot of people make fun of the fact that they're just now getting the automatic scrolling timeline, but as you can see, the implementation is actually pretty good. How do you think it compares with DaVinci and Adobe? Let me know down below in the comments section. So I am, I have to say, pretty impressed with Apple's initial implementation of automatic timeline scrolling. And again, this is just one of the five or so tentpole features, if you will, uh, for Final Cut Pro 10.7. So I'll be considering all those in upcoming videos as well. But the automatic timeline scrolling is, I think, no question, the headline feature, if you will. And I think Apple did a pretty good job. Um, Obviously, this is a pretty difficult problem to solve. Otherwise, Apple would have done so a long time ago, and they alluded to as much when I visited Apple Park uh, last month. But I think their implementation, Apple's implementation of this scrolling is better than what I, what I find on DaVinci Resolve, and it's better than what I find on Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, maybe some of the, the more expert users of those applications can tell me what I did wrong so that I can refine or improve the performance of timeline scrolling, but out of the box, I'm pretty impressed with what Apple brings to the table in Final Cut Pro 10.7. Now, this feature is far from perfect. I'm super disappointed that there is no uh, real-time waveforms when uh, recording voiceovers, so that's something I was anticipating, I thought would be there. I don't really understand why it's not there given everything else Apple's done, but maybe that'll be coming in a future update, hopefully. Um, and there are going to be instances where you're going to need to disable the automatic timeline scrolling. As I said, uh, you can assign a keyboard shortcut, so that's nice, but you're not going to always want to use this feature. Uh, obviously it depends on how you edit, but I can already see, uh, circumstances where I would want to disable the timeline scrolling as I'm going about my edit. But overall, I'm very impressed by what Apple's brought to the table. I think there's a lot of thought that has gone into this and it really does show as I've seen how much deeper it is than just timeline scrolling, right? There's a lot more to it than just the basic concept of timeline scrolling. So what do you guys think? Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. How do you think it performs? Do you plan on using it? How do you think it compares to other NLEs? Or do you think it was like a waste of time for Apple to invest uh, the resources into bringing this to the table? Let me know what you think down below in the comment section and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this and thumbs up if you appreciate stuff, uh, deep dives like this as well. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.